Hey guys, Brian here. Man, it's a beautiful weekend this weekend. As you might notice, I'm on crutches. I'm supposed to be actually running a half marathon today with Melissa, but uh, instead I'm out of commission. Uh, Cause earlier this week I was out running, preparing, training, and I uh, rolled my ankle and fractured a bone in my foot. So I am out of commission for a couple of months in terms of running, but it's not gonna stop me from working on my RV. Lots to do. Um, actually, this is a pretty exciting week for me because uh, earlier I ordered a couple of uh, components for uh, my solar charging system that I've been waiting to get installed. Um, this is gonna actually finish up my solar charging uh, system in the RV, kind of the, get it set up the way I've been wanting to get it set up. And I'm excited to get it all hooked up and put together because I got some dry camping plans for this summer and I wanna be fully self-sufficient. Um, powered I got my own power and uh, so let's just see what I got uh, it's a um, I guess you can call it a, an early birthday present my birthday is coming up and uh, I found uh, some good deals did some research on a pure sign uh, Samlex inverter that comes with a remote and I also got an upgraded uh, solar charge controller which is a um, Morningstar TS45 MPPT charge controller which is an upgrade to my um, existing PWM uh, Morningstar uh, solar charge controller as well. But this one actually will take full advantage of the input, the higher input voltage coming in from my panels. So more on that in a minute, but let's take a look at the, uh, these components. Pretty excited, let's check them out. So here is my um, 2000 watt PureSign inverter. It's a Samlex. And uh, what I really liked about it is it actually came with this uh, remote. So this remote plugs right into this uh, port right there and I can use it to turn on and off the uh, inverter from inside the coach. I'm gonna wire it inside and mount it and also shows the power output um, that it's drawing. So also this uh, ugh, charge controller. So this is the MPPT um, TriStar charge controller from Morningstar. It's really similar to the one that I have now, uh, which is the um, TS45, it's the PWM version, but it looks a lot like this, except it's, this one's just a little bit bigger. Actually, it's probably about twice as big in terms of depth and everything, but in terms of function, uh, it's wired the same way. Um, it's just that this one is an MPPT charge controller and will take full advantage of the higher input voltage coming in from my panels, which can run up about 48 volts. So you can tell from looking at this thing, it's 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 pretty heavy duty, uh, good quality um, TriStar controller, and I got a great deal on this on eBay. Um, got it for like $150 cheaper than I've ever seen, so I couldn't resist. Had to get it. Uh, I'm gonna wire up. I wired up this this uh, power cord that I'm gonna hook up to my uh, inverter and uh, to power my coach. And this is going to run and connect to this 30 amp um, receptacle that I will just plug in my um, my existing 30 amp uh, power cord in the RV to. So when I'm not hooked up to shore power, I'm simply going to connect it here, which is going to be connected to my inverter. And then I'll be able to turn my inverter on and off um, and use it whenever I need to. Um, so that's going to be my setup. Uh, a few other things, I got some wire and uh, cable I'm gonna hook up and that's it pretty cool I'm so excited I'm gonna give this a thumbs up like <laughs> okay I've removed the uh, the other charge controller here so this is the uh, when I had installed the uh, PWM charge controller and I'm gonna go ahead and replace that with this new MPPT one so pretty much the same unit except for one's MPPT and one's not. But in terms of the, uh, the settings and everything, it's all pretty much the same. So it's pretty much just moving wires and mounting the new, the new unit. But you can kind of tell the difference between these two in terms of size. Here's the new one. It's pretty, pretty big. It's kind of double, it's almost double the size of this guy. Look at that. In terms of thickness look at that pretty hefty guy so I'm gonna go ahead and install this guy 
and um, excited to fire it up. Okay, I've got the new controller in there now. Um, it's working pretty good. Uh, right now there's no sun, so I'm going to have to check it again tomorrow, but uh, there's a little bit of a tight squeeze uh, to get this thing swapped out, but it's working. Okay, I got this all hooked up, and I'm so excited. Here's my uh, inverter all installed in this storage bay here. Um, got two connections to it. I have the uh, remote, which goes inside, duh, and uh, the single receptacle here. I wired a plug that runs to the uh, battery bank, which is also where my, my power cord is, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, but I'm really happy. I fired it up and it actually works really well first time. And um, just checking out all the AC appliances inside and see how it goes. But here, let me show you how it all works. So um, what I wanted was to be able to provide power to all my AC appliances, my all my receptacles inside the RV. So. Normally, if you want to do that, you have you need some sort of uh, transfer switch to be able to sense when there's power um, from an all, another source besides your shore power and uh, or generator and switch accordingly. So, turns out I already have one because there's already a transfer switch inside that switches between generator and shore power. So, what I did was to hook up this um, 30 amp plug or receptacle inside here which is wired directly to my inverter and all I have to do when I'm not hooked up to shore power is take my 30 amp power cord and plug it in to this receptacle and now my inverter is ready to be turned on and and it'll basically supply power to all my receptacles inside the RV but there's one catch and uh, that is that you have to um, disable or turn off your um, charger inside your converter charger because you don't want your um, inverter to be inadvertently charging your batteries at the same time that it's getting power so it's like this vicious circle you don't want that so yeah so hit the breaker on your um, converter on your breaker box or uh, just disable it if you're not going to use it in, in my case I have solar so I don't really need it that much Okay, now when I want to switch to inverter power, I make sure things are off and make sure I'm not plugged into shore power, make sure my power cord's connected to that receptacle, and um, this remote that I've put right inside the door here, uh, I can simply just push the button and uh, fire it up, on it goes. Pretty handy having it right here. Um, it's pretty close to the inverter and it was uh, pretty easy to install. Um, and yeah, it came with it. Pretty cool and handy. Now there you go, project over. Now I'm ready to do some dry camping. Now I hope you uh, got some ideas from this if you're thinking of doing the same thing on your RV. You know, of course your RV might be different than mine, probably is. So, uh, you know, put some thought into it, do a little research and come up with the best setup for you. And as always, if you're not comfortable doing this stuff, uh, consult a professional. I'm just kind of me working on my RV and I got a little background in electronics too, so that helps. But hope this gives you some ideas and I hope it was helpful and uh, gave you a lot of information. So I'll see you next time and take it easy. If you have any comments, suggestions, criticisms, well, whatever. <laughs> Leave them in the comments below. I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, there's a couple of young deer in the bushes right over here. Let's see if we can get a look at them. A couple of young fawns. It's that time of year. Right over there. Yep, there they are. Told ya.
So you might be wondering if it's possible to run your microwave well on an inverter and charging with solar. So I've got my inverter on and I haven't actually done it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and make some microwave popcorn. Use my coffee pot this morning, that worked pretty good. So let's go with the microwave test. I'm guessing this thing draws about 11 or 1200 watts. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Popcorn in, popcorn, start. I'm watching my uh, amp meter here and it's up to, woo, 